Hello and welcome everyone to episode 326 of Aussie Tech Heads. It is another Thursday night, the last night in January. So I uh, hope, hope this podcast finds you well and dandy. We've got another big show for you this week and we've also got uh, Will, Shane and Eric to uh, help us get through it. Hello boys, how are you guys doing? Evening. Hello. Good oh, evening. Good. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> now Aussie Tech Heads, you know, our website is uh, hosted by our hosting servers. And if you need a host for any reason, a blog, professional uh, business, or whatever, you can uh, jump on and, uh, and host with us. It's uh, aussietechheads.com.au forward slash hosting. It's uh, fast, reliable, and affordable. That's the main thing. And if there's not a plan there that suits you, give me an email and uh, we'll sort something out for you. It's um, a shared hosting and it is, I tell you, fast. The servers are in Sydney. And uh, yeah, it's uh, it's not too bad, not too bad. Ninety nine point five percent uptime. Yeah, great, that's great. AussieTechHeads.com.au forward slash hosting. Check them out. All right, what else has been going on? Not much. Another week's gone by. More news has happened, and uh, we're going to find out what's going on. But first, let's do a weather update. It's uh, finally stopped raining up here in Queensland. And oh, well, it hasn't. Speak for yourself, there, Forrest. <laughs> okay, well it is down here. <laughs> <laughs> It's been and, uh, pelting and, down all day up here. Yeah, well, we've had the uh, we had a bit of sun, so it's not too bad. Yeah, a few trees blown over, but it uh, wasn't too bad. So we were quite sheltered here. But I think so you, it was on someone else's property, so what do you care? Well, that's right. It was on the footpath. So. <laughs> so, step over it. Yeah, well, hello. So, uh, yeah, so, Will, let's, uh, what, what's been going on up there? We'll start with you because you've been in the thick of it. <clears throat> yeah, it's been mad up here um, the, between, the, weather, you know, between the, the cyclone, the mini tornadoes popping up everywhere, the copious amounts of rain, the huge amount of wind, um, just the, the damage and the, the, the flooding in some areas was five metres higher than, than two years ago. Um, ironically, it comes on the, the what is it, 20, um, what was it, 1974, so the 13th, uh, 9th, what are we, 74, 29th yeah. anniversary of that. Yeah, right. Um, look, same yeah, weekend. Look, I was uh, thinking, you know, you, you get the people on the news and everything, they're going crazy, this is the worst one ever, and blah, 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 and it's only been two years since the last one happened, and well, there's no doubt that some towns uh, did get affected quite harshly. But as far as the cyclonic weather goes, like, I it's remember, normal. It is normal. It's, it's <laughs> it normal. Is. It's not. You're it's right. completely normal. Yeah, well, it's, what's not normal is the, it's happened two twice in three or in in two years. But well, no, three. actually, I mean, we got a massive storm, a huge storm last year as well. So, I mean, it's normal, but it's not usually for such a prolonged period of time. Normally, mm. we get a massive storm. It's only for a couple of hours or that day. The fact that it happened over three days. Um, basically, and dumped. You know, some places got 500 mil of rain in 24 hours. Yeah, yeah, that, that is a lot. Some have got 600 actually as well. well six, yeah, 600. But, you know. um, look, yeah, I know what you're saying, but overall, the monsoon hurricane season is quite normal for that time of year. Oh, it is, but it, I think the exp- it was much more widespread than what usually happens. There was places that flooded that don't normally flood, but strangely there was places that are low lying that weren't affected because they just mm. didn't get the rain so it right. was different this time it wasn't caused by the river rising it was just caused right. by copious mm. amounts of stormwater runoff and yep. then the high tide pushed it back up so well that's right they had the combination of the full moon and the king tide too which mm. didn't help but all i'm saying is that uh, and, we'll, and we'll get to shane in that's a minute not climate change he's, he's so waiting. just not no, don't even go <laughs> yeah look, look i can remember back 20 years ago you know when i was a kid or whatever and you know or in teenage years and everything and it was it was like this every year you know mm. come new, new year's day i remember um, multiple yep. new year's days walking down the streets of cool and gutter you know signs blowing everywhere i remember yep. big boulders from the beach you know that lined the foreshore like in the yep. groin big boulders yep. it was washed up onto the the yep. road you know i remember going to schoolies and the weather yeah. was like this yeah <laughs> And, yeah. and, you know, the, the Pizza Hut at Kira. I remember the waves um, yes. breaking. We used to cop it all the time. And smashing onto yeah. the, the, Kira, the Pizza Hut at Kira. I remember this, Kira Beach was always getting shut. Yeah. This is not new. And I reckon... No, no, no. I so all the Greg Combe, it's not climate change. Get off your red no, undies. And I mean, it's not, it's not new, especially for coastal areas, but it is quite unusual to see it as far in as where we, uh, where we are at Ipswich. Yeah. I mean, they would get storms but they would be only you know an afternoon mm. storm it's, it's unusual to see it 
just just the patterns. I mean, it's just a freak pattern. It happens every so often. Yeah. You, know, so right. you get happen, a freak but... pattern, you get the combination of the moon and the king tide. It's gonna That's be, right. You know, and the problem is pattern. people, I think, the hysteria around it was worse because people mm. were still recovering because we had a flood last year as well. A lot of areas yeah. flooded last year. So yeah. we've, we've had three floods in three years, which is, you know, not common. No, the, the the flooding, not the flooding to the extent that it has been, is not common. But as far as the wind and the rain and all that sort of stuff, oh, that, yeah. that's that's every year. But I think I just put it down to you know, as you get older, the people that are controlling the news are, are probably getting younger, and that's the first time they've seen something like this. And this is you're right. That's and, a good yeah. point. And they're that's going, a, oh, so they're going, oh my god, I've never seen anything in my lifetime, but I'm twelve. That's right. <laughs> yeah, I'm fourteen next week. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You've been alive for having said that. I remember a period of time when we didn't have rain for what was it six years or something. I know long. I'll tell you how long. When we I moved into this house in two thousand and three, we had water restrictions from two thousand and three until uh, the beginning of last year. Yeah, in New South Wales, it was a drought for ten years, effectively. I remember kids saying, "What's that? What 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 is this stuff? I don't I don't get it. What do I do with it?" You know. Right, a spr- and they were talking about the sprinkler. They didn't know what yeah. the sp- <laughs> sprinkler, sp- rain, showers. That's right. Now, this is funny liquid matter. Now, 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 now Shane, what, what's going over there in uh, Perth? Did you have any wild weather, any any foam? <laughs> no, <laughs> nothing at all. Um, just been sort of just mid sweet. to – we're moving up to high 30s by the weekend, so it's just your normal kind of good weather over here. Right, oh, good. How are you lucky? Know. Good weather, shonky cowboys, just move it along. Yeah, <laughs> oh, that's good. That's good. So, um, yeah, so oh, just just before we get off the weather, did you see the, the footage of that the police car or that car that came through the foam and nearly yeah, hit the two coppers? Did, did you see the police car one that went through the foam? The person that was in that car who came out of the foam and was totally um, like blinded or totally obscured by the foam, they, he should have been booked. He should have been fined. Because obviously he couldn't see what he was going. What's he? he, what he, he his car was parked six foot back on the gutter. He knew all he had to do was drive forward six foot, and then, you know, that's all he did. In that period of time, the cops walked in front of his car. But you can't. Was the, you can't operate a vehicle if you can't see where you're going. No. Prior to that, he'd got out. He'd gone. Oh, I've got to move my car before it gets swamped. With the cops standing next to him, going, you know, I'm just going to move my car. And he moved his car. I was probably ten foot. He moved it from the gutter to out of the foam, and, and it, in that time, everybody had walked in front of him. And, and how do you, how do you know this, Mister Know It All? Because uh, I know one of those coppers. <laughs> Fair enough. <laughs> All right. <laughs> but did you see the 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 video on YouTube of somebody recording a cop car doing exactly the same yes. thing an hour, a couple of hours earlier? Yes, I did. I did. Well, that was those coppers. Yeah. Okay. Right. Right. <laughs> so they couldn't book him. <laughs> All right, let, let's let's stop with the weather. That's the weather update. So as you can get, as you can see, it's been quite uh, quite hectic around here. Now um, Shane, he's got he's got the what's happened this week in tech. Shane, just two little two little stories. Yeah, pretty quiet week this week. Uh, January 29, 1901, Dumont will make TV work. That is a story of. Uh, let's go. In Brooklyn, a boy, uh, a boy is born who will himself give birth to the revolutionary home entertainment. Alan B. Dumont will be called by many the father of television. Basically, it was um, a guy who invented television, made the first television. Yeah, he did right. it as like a bit of a project. Um, obviously, he had no one else to copy from because he was the first one to do it. So 1901. So that's yes. uh, wasn't radio. When was radio? In? That was nineteen eighteen. Was that right? Or was radio? Or was radio before that? No, radio was before that. Yeah, I didn't. Think yeah, radio was before. Yeah, we covered radio right. a few weeks ago. Mm, okay. <laughs> and um, what's this other one here? You got here? January twenty third, nineteen seventy eight. Right. This is basically where Sweden bans aerosol sprays and uh, an evident. Uh, who? <laughs> yeah, about yeah. <laughs> Now, in 1978, Sweden was the first country to ban aerosol sprays that um, contained the uh, banned, what are they called, CFCs, carbofluorocarbons. Yeah, what a load. Yeah, we, well, we didn't get that banned here until probably 90s. Ten years ago. I yeah. think we can still get it here, can't you? No. No, it's high. Okay. Everybody, everybody's finally banned it now. What about yeah. the bug spray and I put my lighter in front of it? That still goes off. No, you, because they use um, propane. 
now it's the propellant. So oh, even deodorants, better. deodorants, even everything better. is now propane. Propane. So if if I I could put a match in front of my deodorant and burn oh, yeah. my armpit. Yep. <laughs> go on. Let's uh, go on. We got a couple minutes spare. Hang on a second. Just so <laughs> right there. That's a, that's a sort of quick way of having a waxed armpit, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> all right. Uh, all right. So let's move on to some uh, stories. What's been going on this week? Uh, let me have a little one here. Well, here's, here's one here that'll get us all going. Uh, phone unlocking has been declared oh. illegal. It is so stupid. In the, in the US. That's, the whole DMCA thing needs to be shot. Yes. I, think that, I think that DMCA should be relegated to being a rap name. <laughs> but, <laughs> It should be. Done. Should Let's do it. Name. <laughs> now, citizens of the United States are no longer allowed to unlock their smartphones after an official decree banning the practice came into effect on the weekend. God, that is so it, stupid. It is, but, isn't it? It is stupid. That, yes, Will. Does that have the fine print? That it, you, You're not allowed to unlock your phone. That's a carrier unlock we're talking. You can't unlock it from that carrier without the carrier's permission. You are quite legally allowed, however, to route it, to put mods on it, to do whatever you want, but you cannot unlock it from the provider. Yeah, they're talking about a carrier. Like, in other words, these poor <laughs> blokes from the states who want to travel, they can't put another SIM card in it because it's locked to the carrier. But you can do everything else with your phone, and don't they realise that right. once you route your phone, you unlock it anyway? Well, that's illegal then. <laughs> well, it's... So- it's- so but up until January 26, uh, uh, US consumers were able to ask their carrier to unlock the phone under the Digital Millennium, Millennium Copyright Act, but, has, but this right has now been removed. The Republican political strategist Derek Carner called the, anti-locking, the, called the anti-unlocking decree the most ridiculous law of 2013 and called for a new version of the DMCA and other intellectual property legislation. It's what happens when you've got the socialists in power. Hello, American listeners. The ban... Bye-bye, wh- wh- American listeners. <laughs> <laughs> the ban on... Don't un- upset them. I'm going over there. <laughs> <laughs> it's his fault. The yeah, ban you can blame on... blame me, mate. Send me an email, eric at netchannel2.com. I've got no problem. The ban on unlocking phones was first announced in October last year. And uh, jailbreaking, which is allowing a phone to run uh, to run non-official applications and unlocking bootloaders to install alternative firmware or to gain administrative privileges are not covered by the new law. So, Will, you've, you've probably got that one so on, on the knock. So, basically, to, to put it into a perspective that sort of makes a bit more sense for people, the DMCA was the law that was introduced originally to stop copyright theft. Um, that was basically what it was introduced for. Now, if... It's weird, to, right? This has got nothing to do with copyright theft. No. It's your phone. And, and yeah, no. if you want to sort of understand the analogy, think of a chessboard. Even a, a novice playing chess can understand the first few moves you play in chess. Okay, yeah. there was a reason I put my pawn there. There was a reason I moved my castle there. But as the game progresses and it gets more and more complicated and there's more and more moves and more things get added on top of each other, even the, the most experienced chess player struggles to figure out what's going on. And it's the same sort of principle with the DMCA. It was started as this particular idea. Very simple law. And then over the years, so these little tags <laughs> and little bits and little ideas and little it's, concepts it's, have all right. been added to it. Right. And it's now one of the most horrible things that they've managed to do. Yeah. It's like you bought a car, Glenn, right? And they say, well, no, you can't put those tyres on it. Yeah. Well, actually, they do say that. No, yeah. but you can put any tyres you want, providing that it's not going to be a danger to you or the public. Yeah, that's that's right. right. Yeah, but they're not going to tell you you can't do it at all, which is what this is saying. You can't do it at all. In some situations, the first-time offenders may be fined up to five hundred thousand dollars and put in jail for five years. Do you believe that? Or what both. Socialist, sorry, comrades, but what social crap is that? Mm. For repeat offenders, the maximum penalty increases to one one million dollars, or oh, imprisonment for up to ten years. The decree of the Librarian of Congress states. That's yeah. that's massive. That's um. I'd love to, I'd love to see that actually stand up in the real world, though. It mm. wouldn't. I don't think it would. That's a civil liberties thing. Yeah, exactly. You get less for murder. So is this a yeah. federal thing or a state by state thing? Child abuse. It's Just, ridiculous. It's a Amer- American court. The whatever they are. The yeah. grand. The is it is it federal court. level or is it a state by state <laughs> thing? No, it's a oh. everywhere thing. Mm. It's passed by Washington, so... Continuing on with the stupid um, American laws... Yes. um, US authorities can access non-citizen iCloud data without a warrant. 
Yeah, that's a bit worrying, isn't it? Worry. The Foreign Intelligence Surveillance Act allows the U.S. government to open access to electronic information stored by non-U.S. citizens on U.S.-based servers, like a host class of the iCloud, Google Drive, Dropbox. So, so sorry, they can access non... No, if you're can, not a citizen of America, yeah, they can access those yeah, drives. Because, drives. It's, because they're held in American yeah, servers. Yeah, right, right. Yeah. Yeah, so, right. but, so, but it's not held in America, please. Yeah, mm. the same as, um, but I mean, if you read the fine print of iTunes, you'll see there's also a screen logging, um, cap, a screen logging um, law and thingy in there as well, saying that what? they're perfectly allowed to capture your screen at any point in time. Mm, okay. Yeah. So, yeah. That's... Another reason I don't use iTunes. <laughs> well, I don't use i I don't use iCloud for for anything other than um, what you call it, um, tracking where my you know I find my iPhone. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Um, yeah. I use Dropbox though, and they they come under the same laws. Mm. Um, you know, there's nothing in there that. Well, I, I don't know if Drop, but Dropbox but, has Dropbox has Australian servers. So if you're in Australia, so I don't know how that. Uh, depends if you sign. Oh, you might be right. I, I don't know how that works. Yeah, but look, the look. The, but what app, if it's backed up on, on American servers? It's stored well, here, but if that's backed up on American servers, they can access the backup. So, well, that's what I was wondering, but I mean, really, at any point in any at any point in time, data passes through every country, doesn't it? I mean, are we right. now? Do we have to abide by every country's no, legislation every time we access it's, it's Final storage point is what I think they're talking about. <laughs> yeah, but look, you, look, we had that story last week, you know, about um uh, about the Google having to fork over, I think, what were the seventh most requested access of, of governments in the world? Australia is. Yeah, behind China, 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 and yeah, that's China. Right. That's what, exactly what you said last week, too. In Cuba. <laughs> that's right. Now, uh, now speaking of uh, all this sort of stuff, the first Kiwi file sharer has been huh. fined at the yeah. Copyright Tribunal. So you can't get a break in New Zealand, can you? <laughs> yeah. Well, this, this lady, now you'd have to say this is pretty crazy. This, this chick, she gets fined. Uh, the, um, the country, uh, she has, she's had ordered to pay $493 for three infringements, okay? So she's, she's asked, been asked to pay this Shut much. Shut up. Now, old Kim.com's living in a mansion. Mm. How does that work? You know, well, they can't touch his assets. They know, can't but, his assets. But this chick can get fined because she probably hasn't got the dough behind her to go and fight it. So he, hearing an application from the Recording Industry Association Something of New very Zealand, communist there, Glenn. Well, she can't fight it, so she hasn't got the money or the wherewithal to fight it, so they pick on the small person. To drive a point on. I, mean, I think you're making an example of her because of what Kim did. The, tri- the tribunal uh, told was told that the person accused of falsifying had downloaded two songs, "Man Down" by Rihanna and "Tonight Tonight" by Hot Chili Ray. But both shit songs. You just wasted your money. <laughs> the first tune twice between November 2011 and July 2012. The, acu- the accused, a Telecom New Zealand customer, admitted she had downloaded the first Rihanna song, but she was unaware that it was illegal to do so. I don't uh, think so. Okay. It's so yeah, much. Yeah, so let me just it's... say that. Well, see, I don't know. What did they actually charge her with? What was the actual description of the charge? So Copyright th- infringement. The accused was found to have downloaded the songs and was ordered to pay comp- and compensate uh, Rihanna's. With one dollar seventy nine New Zealand for the Hot Chili Ray song and two dollars thirty nine New Zealand for the two Rihanna songs, she was also ordered to contribute fifty dollars towards the cost of sending out copyright infringement notices and two hundred dollars to compensate Rihanna's, which is that record injury in New Zealand, for the tribunal application fee. Now, further eleven alleged file shares await their hearings before the tribunal, which can award damages of up to twelve thousand Australian dollars. So Rianne's has asked for a total of two thousand six hundred ninety nine dollars and twenty five cents in penalties for five songs, saying each had been downloaded ninety times in its estimate. Yeah, good estimate. Yeah, and that's an estimate. Like, Pick a number. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. <laughs> now, it's crazy. It, how, it, it's not a copyright infringement because you're not selling the product, so you're not infringing on copyright. It becomes fair use, uh, and it's not pirating because that's not what. If you look up the actual definition of pirating, that's not pirating. So, yeah, but she got the song without paying for it. But she's not sharing it either. She, she's matter. not sharing it. It's no different than her recording it off the radio. Mate, it's like going to the pie shop and getting a pie without paying for it. It's the same thing. What, you don't? <laughs> Never. 
<laughs> you, <laughs> no, but reach well, over. She took, so she took something without paying for it at its simplest yeah. level. Yep, stealing. Yeah, I can see what yeah, they, they're going that's on what I mean. about. If she was charged with theft, that's different. If she's been charged with copyright infringement, that's a false charge. That's what I'm saying. She has been charged under a false charge. If, the way I read it, she was charged under a copyright infringement, which it isn't. Mm. Well, unless their definition of copyright infringement means getting something that you doesn't belong to you. And but look, you, you don't often hear about the, the, the little mumsy and dadsy getting hauled over like this. So um, well, that, you haven't heard of none in Australia, as far as I've heard. Oh, I've heard of a couple. Well, they, but, but they've all got off because they've said, well, what are you charging me with? They say copyright infringement. They say it's not copyright. See you later. They, so, uh, as soon as they try to do that... So you, tell, me again, you, tell me again why it's not copyright infringement. I don't know the exact legal is behind it, but I know that the, the w- way the people I know who have been tried to be charged with copyright infringement... It is not copyright because they're not profiting from it. They're not. They're simply de- listening to it as a sample, and then they choose whether or not they're going to buy it. Reviewing if they don't it, buy it, they're going to delete it. They, you know, they're not selling it. They're not making money from it. So you can't. You know, they're copying a product, but copyright there isn't stop you copying a product. Copyright is there to stop you from profiting from a product. So you can you can copy a product for personal use if you make it like if you you know if you make it. Yeah, yeah. But I think the yeah, so look, it's, uh, yeah, I don't know. But I mean, I having said the that, is. the copyright ad that they're using on all the DVDs is using copyrighted music, so go figure. Mm. But anyway, um, <laughs> we can go. We can they go stole on. the music, so. Yeah. We're going all night with that. Now, uh, Shane, what have, what have you got for us over there in uh, sunny, sunny WA? I might follow along with the audio story that I've got. Okay. Since we're talking about music and stuff. Why not? So, Popular subscription music service Audio has announced that Australian users can now stream free music on their web, uh, on the web, bringing the service in line with the US. From 8 a.m. tomorrow, which is probably been and gone by now, um, we can yeah basically download the same uh, a streaming thing from um, Audio with with no charge. We don't have to put in any credit card details. Um, it's through the desktop app on PC and Mac. With no credit, like I said, with no credit card details or payment required, the free service will offer a limited allowance of streaming music for six months without ads. After which, subscription to one of Audio's paid plans will be required. So That's it's like a um, a bonus period rather than a free service. So still, still not a, as good as Spotify then, because Spotify is great, isn't it? Like two ads every five songs, and it's free. That's what so. you should have done. Listen to Spotify, really. Well, yeah, why would you... But aren't you still downloading it? No, you're streaming it. Yeah, but you're still downloading data. Yeah, but no, it's, you're, you're allowed. you're streaming it. It's not saved anywhere. But you're allowed. It's, it's, but you're it's allowed. That's authorized. right. They've got a license with the, with, the, with the record companies to stream mm. it to you. Because the record... That's because, of the, because they're allowed to play ads. That's right. That's right. And if you don't want the ads or you want it on your mobile device... Then you pay. You subscribe. You pay. And that's how you get around it because you're mm. paying for the use. So, so they're more like a radio No service, such thing as a free know. lunch, in other words. So moving along. Yeah, that's right. So, you know, that's, that's how it works. In addition to Australia, the free audio streaming music service is now available in the UK, Belgium, Canada, Denmark, Estonia, Finland, France, Netherlands, New Zealand. New Zealand. Woohoo, there, there you go, uh, whatever her name was. And Norway, Portugal, Spain, and Sweden. So all around the joint. But, yes, look, Spotify is the one for me. You guys using Spotify? Uh, from time to time. Yeah. Oh, look, it's, it's great. It's on. I've got it loaded up here on on the uh, PC. It's sitting right next to me as well on the Mac, and uh, I don't have does the. Work, does it work on Windows Eight? It does. It does. Lucky, lucky. And, and look, yes, I, I do have uh, Windows Eight. Uh, for those of you of who wonder, because I think last week we had a few issues last week, and I didn't get to talk about my Windows Eight experience. But I, I did put in. I did load up Windows Eight. Now I, ha- I did. Thank you. I did write something down. Um, now I only I only found four things to write down actually. <laughs> so I, I like the things that I noticed. Well, the good things, the good things you like four. There's about three pages of the other stuff. I, I can't lift that volume. Now no, it's, that's good. <laughs> so the toolbar. There's a remember if you got a dual monitor. Yeah, the toolbar only appeared on one screen. Well, yes, I, I could only get it to appear on one screen. Well, now it's on two screens. So there well, you that's, go. Well, that's that's probably a plus. That's well, good. I've always had that anyway because ATI drivers let you do that. Okay, next. All right, now it was um, auto. It auto activated itself, which was good. That was that saved me a click. 
so that's good. Yep, oh, gee. Woo, thank God. Would have been really? <laughs> that one. That's right. Oh, I don't want to wear my mouse out. Now, um, all the drivers that downloaded are okay, and also it also mounted an ISO, which I don't know if Windows 7 did. I don't, uh, think, don't I, think I think so. you had to download a little program because I used to... Cl- down- yeah, you had to use BART PE or something like that if you wanted to use an ISO. I used that one with a little sheep as a logo. What was that called? Sheep ISO. Something like that. <laughs> I don't know what it was. But yeah, so auto, I, ISO auto-mounted. I, I installed Office uh, 2013, uh, installed Skype. Now, I initially had a bit of a problem with the Skype because it, I ins- ah, installed it as an app and the apps don't really... Uh, talk across to the desktop. So in Windows 8, you've got your desktop and then like well, your desktop environment and then you've got your, say, like your app environment. So I was finding that the uh, people were talking to me on Skype, but because it was in the app and I'm on the desktop, the app was closed. The app was unseen because it was off somewhere and I was, you know, using the desktop. But there is a desktop version of uh, Skype, which took me a couple of days to figure out. So I put a link on the Aussie Tech Heads Facebook page if you want to sort that one out. But over and above everything else, it seems to be quite stable. It boots really fast, even with I don't have a UEFI uh, BIOS or anything like that, and it still boots up oh, under 20 seconds, I'd say. It's pretty good. It's pretty hey, it fast. It was so quick. That's one thing I loved. As soon as I installed it, it was, even before all the motherboard drivers and everything was installed, it just loaded straight up. Yep, yep. No, I was. I'm. I'm happy with it. I'm pretty much living in Windows 8 now. The only reason I don't live in Windows 8 is for some unknown reason. I can't get the MyOB to load. It won't. That'd be a MyOB. It yeah, took them a MyOB months. thing. It took yeah. them three years to get it to work under. It's still. Vista. Oh, look. It's it took still them three doesn't... years to update the 2009 bloody yeah. tax rates. Yeah, it still doesn't work. Uh, the the MyOB in Windows 7 fully anyway. It doesn't. <laughs> it doesn't communicate with Outlook. Every email that that stupid MyOB sends. I've got supposed to, to go to the Outlook. Yeah, I've got to click allow. Every <laughs> single email. And yeah, sh- another should. reason to not use it. <laughs> yeah. Oh, look, it, it's, it's got its limitations. But, it very. You know. It has got a lot of limitations. Uh, look, there are other ones out there. Uh, I think. Can you recommend any, Eric? You got any recommendations? No. no I don't. tell my clients to use my. Op. Yep. Okay. Uh, I don't know why you would do that because you put them on a bum stick. <laughs> well, it's the best of a bad bunch. Let's be honest. Yeah, well, yeah, I know. Look, but you can't. Now, apparently, I went to upload. Uh, I, w- I went to ring him up and say, why can't I do this on Windows 8, blah, blah, blah. And I just went, well, let me just have a look and see how much the next version is, you know, just that would be compatible with Windows 8. There's no, there's no version as far as I could see. No. You've got a monthly subscribe now. So there's no buy outright version anymore. Uh, no, it's a subscription and then, uh, and yeah. then update from time to time. Yeah, so look, oh, next, time, next time I'm into it, into buying something, I'm seriously going to think about something online like uh, the Zero XER o.com.au that's oh, I don't like that. Yeah, why is that? Oh, it's just I'm sure they'll improve but it's just written by amateurs. But it program. works. But it works? Yeah, well it works, you know, but mm. it's just it's there's, infantile. There's that's all... coming from me who's whose profession is that. So yeah. I'm very going to be very critical. R- yes. But as far as say uh just keeping it the the cash books and all that like it would be able to do that. That's all. That's all businesses have really got to well, keep, isn't people it? People don't forget that f- every entry has a, an opposite entry. That's right. Uh, yeah, that, that, it's like physics, isn't it? An equal and opposite entry. That's right. So you can't just put in a debit and not have a credit. I that, mean, there's Australian Australian pr- um, programs like BizWiz um, that's been around for thirty years. Yep. You know. Um, so there are there are options, but I mean, when you walk into MYOB or whatever, that's well, when you walk in. When you walk into OfficeWorks or Harvey Norman or whatever, that's um, that's what you see on the shelf, you know. MYOB yeah. and Quicken, and Quicken is the dog's breakfast. Oh, they're yeah. both dog's breakfast. And yet, funnily, a few years ago it was the other way around. Quicken was fantastic, and MYOB was the problem, and now it's sort of the other way around. Although neither of them are any good now. Uh, look, I think <laughs> QuickBooks has always been a dog's breakfast. Yeah, look, I'm not happy with either of it. I just I went from. Uh, years ago, I was my old, but then I thought, oh, look, I'm sick of this rubbish. I went to QuickBooks and then got sick of that rubbish. And when it was time to, you know, to buy another one, then I went back to my, which I am now. And I'm just sick of it, eh? I am just so sick of the rubbish that they dish I, up. I think, I think it might be you. <laughs> it's not me. It's not me. So if, if you're running MyOB on your system, just 
be careful if you're going to upgrade to Windows 8 that Myob may not work. There's a good chance it won't work because they haven't upgraded their software. Yep, some Switch versions to the, do, uh, the cash flow manager website because it's an Australian uh, one as well and apparently Jim Owen is struggling for money. Well, is he? <laughs> Given is... that he's the, uh, <laughs> the spokesperson for it. I don't know if he knows he is, but... <laughs> but he is. He is. They, they filmed him in a pub one night and just bunged it up there. All right. <laughs> Now, uh, Shane, what else have you got up for us down there, wherever you are? You got something uh, else? Over here, I'll do the next story is the UN Group OK's new video format to save bandwidth. The UN, tele- the, the UN Telecommunications Agency says its members have agreed upon a new compression format that could dramatically cut down the amount of internet bandwidth currently used by video files. The International Telecommunications Union says that the format, format or codec known as H.265 uh, require about half the amount of data needed as its predecessor H2, H.264. Oh, that's good. Good news. And um, H.264 is used pretty much across the board. It's um, iPad compatible. Um, works on the web, works on um, both Mac and, and Windows. Mm. So, um, so, yeah. So that's good. Yeah, H.265, I think, um, yeah, well, I think Flash. Why is Flash still here? Why, why is it still hanging around? Why does it just die? But uh, it's still here and, uh, yeah, but H.264 is a lot better. It's a lot cleaner. And let's hope that H.265 is even better still. And, um, it'll be good. Apparently, it'll, uh, it will allow the average person to stream a um, red video which is 4k so what a red video like it's porn. called red the technology is red it's it's a 4k <laughs> video instead of a like 1080p is our standard high def right well this is 4k so 4000 four times four times 180p basically. uh well no it's not four times it's four times four times so it's because it's four times four times wider four times deeper so it's okay well it's 180p squared yeah yeah, right, nice. So, you, I mean, that's a lot of data. If you think about how much It's a lot of bandwidth, so you can forget that in my suburb. No <laughs> NBN. No, no, but they reckon anybody who can stream a... They reckon it's going to equate to about whatever... So if you can stream a 720 YouTube video now, you should be able to st- stream a 4K video once that standard gets sorted. Yeah, okay, nice. So I don't know if this is the time and the place, but this kind of topic confuses me because I get confused between this and AVI and MPEG and well, they're that, a, I don't know if this is the time and place to ask the question. They're only uh, like uh, containers. Yeah. And, and they're uh, codecs. They're pre- what are they? How do you... They're like... Uh, how do you explain yeah, it? Codecs. Like, um, yeah. Um, yeah co- it's a code yeah. decode. So you basically, uh, yeah, code decode. Yeah. yeah. So, so, it basically... What it basically does... Uh, it, it, the containers, the API, the MP, the what MP4 extension is just a container. And nine times out of ten, you can rename that. You can rename an AVI to a MPEG and it'll still play. But it's the actual format inside that, that, that the compression format inside that. If you compress RAW, for example, um, a one-hour RAW recording is somewhere around 60 gig. So that's uncompressed in 720. And the same uh, compressed in H.264 is a is close on two gig. So just in by doing a single stage compression like that, you've you've you know dropped it down a few mm. hundred percent. So it uh, and uh, and basically the way MP5 is going to work, uh, sorry H.265 is going to work is it'll be a multi stage compressor. So it'll just compress it a lot more efficiently. Mm. So yeah, that's right, and that's that's what I was doing before the show. I was renaming files. So, yep. they, so they, I could just move them straight across to the iTunes. Now, the only um, down quickly, sorry, the only downside to it is, uh, as we found out once DVDs became popular, is the, it's not necessarily the uh, size of the file that becomes the issue. It becomes the processing power of the computer. So if you've got a low-end computer, in the old days, playing a DVD wasn't wasn't possible unless you had a hardware decoder card because of the, the, the actual amount of data it had to decode to play. So if you're compressing it that much more, the computer's got to work that much harder to decode it. So just because you might be able to actually stream the file physically size-wise doesn't mean your computer's going to be able to play it. That's exactly right. Now, Eric... The Apple has has launched another product. Yeah, look, it's not really a, it's not really a news story in my view. It's a, I had you know you got to mention it, um, mm. so I'll go through it very quickly. No, you've Apple got to mention it. <laughs> well, no, well, I don't have to mention it. I chose to mention it. Uh, Apple to launch one twenty eight gig iPad on February five. So there you go, seven ninety nine, which is pretty pricey for the Wi Fi version, and nine twenty nine 
for the 3G or 4G version. Now, uh, what you are know, they doing look, this? It's good, if I suppose, if you're going to want to carry on a lot of movies and whatnot, but um, I'm not sure. I think that'll only appear to pe- uh, uh, appeal to people who haven't bought one yet because it was too small for storage. I don't think a lot of people are going to go, oh, I've got to have that yeah. now. I've got a 64. I've got to get another one. But I think it'll just appear, uh, appeal to those people who never got one, didn't, didn't want to buy one because they were worried about the storage. Well, a lot of people who wanted storage bought Android tablets because you can run external hard drives off them. So if you wanted a two terabyte external hard drive, you just plug it in. You could have multiple. You could run off a hub, and you could have multiple drives. So uh, even people who are doing storage, I don't know if that was necessarily a problem. Um, well, but, okay, let me rephrase. For for people who didn't want to buy Android. Yeah, yeah, I know what you're saying, but like, you know what I mean. Like there were uh, there were options, but even that. Having said that, I mean my phone is a 32 gig phone. I've got a 64 gig SD card in it, so I've got I've got 96 gig. Anyway, so uh, yeah, you know, I don't really use it. I've got no. a phone, one sixty-four gig, and I've got forty gigs left, and I don't know what to do with it. <laughs> yeah, I've actually found myself when I'm um, what I actually use for is when I had to reformat my computer. I ran out of storage on my hard drive to copy the stuff across, so I actually use my phone as a hundred, or as basically as a terabyte storage drive. <laughs> yeah, right. Well, uh, well, I'll tell you, the article that I got in front of me here was from crn.com.au. Now, th- th- they've got another take on it. Uh, they've gone, Apple has left its, its run at the business market too late, uh, according to resellers. So Tuesday, Apple released a 128-gig iPad, as we know, uh, just as Microsoft is preparing to relaunch the Surface Pro, which I think it's going to be good. It's going to do some good, good things. I think the Surface Pro is going to make it. The storage capacity in the new iPad has been almost doubled. Yeah, we heard that. The new iPad will go on sale, yep, February 5 in the US, black or white. Um, Apple did not reveal when the new model would be in Australia. But apparently uh, the businesses must have, uh, that's where they, the, this big iPad is aimed at. So yeah, look, reason. I'm not sure that's correct because everywhere you go these days, businesses are using iPads. You get on a plane, you can rent an iPad. Yes. So, yes. you know, I'm not sure that that's altogether accurate yeah what but, they're saying there they might have left it too late in respect of maybe they some businesses didn't jump on board because of the storage situation but many well, many businesses are using ipad you go you watch tv shows now and they're featuring ipads as part of their um, and microsoft surface as well yeah um oh you can pick the shows can't you yeah um, look for example uh on uh, csi oh, i don't uh, watch the, that. the las vegas one it's ipads if you watch arrow the new show arrow it's microsoft surface yeah, okay. Because I watch Hawaii Five O. That's uh, Surface. Yeah, Microsoft. Surface. All that's Microsoft right. Microsoft phones, Microsoft Surface. Microsoft yeah, phones. I know. I mean, and then you go the other way, and I know things like Lubmobile, um, their franchises. They all use um, the Android Transformers tablets. Um, you know, so I think by this point, whatever their format, whether it's Android, whether it's a PC tablet, whether it's whatever, they've pretty much got their their business to the point where whatever they're currently using is going to be what they continue to use because right. that's what so, they're using. It's a complete rejig. <laughs> yeah, you know, I mean, can you imagine trying to go from a from a, an Android or an Apple operating so, system and yeah. swapping the other way around? Like, that's yeah, just... you've got to rewrite your apps and it's, the old back end's got to change. It's just a pain in the neck. Mm. Now, while we're sticking with Apple, I don't know, Eric, <clears throat> did you get the one about the tax, Apple tax? Did you get that uh, one? Somewhere. I saw you. I didn't get that one, but... Um, all right, well, I'll, I'll, had it. I'll carry on with it then. Carry, carry on. <laughs> so, carry on. Uh, so Apple oh. slashes are the, their Australian tax bill. Apple received uh, reached record revenue in Australia last year but paid only $40 million in tax. So Good on them. According to the filings that they've, they've filed with ASIC. Now, local revenues jumped 23% to reach $6 billion. You, can, you, can't, you can't fathom it, can you? So that's six billion. That's just what from us Australians. Just Australia. Yep. That's a lot of coin. Now it recorded revenue of four point nine billion last year. Year before, yep. Uh, yeah, sorry, yeah, two thousand eleven is now, isn't it? The year before. Now the assistant treasurer David Bradbury told the Australian Financial Review the company was one of many he believed were using offshore schemes to hide money. Now globally, Apple reported first quarter revenue of fifty one point six billion with a net income of twelve point five four billion. 
Uh, some big numbers there. So this scheme that Bradbury's talking about involves a company reallocating charges and resources to other areas of the business to avoid paying fees in higher taxing countries such as ours. Now, transfer pricing is being targeted by the Australian government with the tax office employing 150 staff to work on compliance, audits and reviews. Yeah, good luck with that. They don't know what they're doing. No. The only people that work for the tax office are the ones that couldn't get real jobs. So, good luck. <laughs> yeah, well, I mean, I suppose, you know, you, you've got um, people at the tax office while getting paid 60 grand a year. No, they get, some of them get paid quite a bit. Yeah, but you've got the, the lawyers or the accountants for Apple probably getting about $5 billion a year. Look, so, it's very simple. If they want multinationals to not hide their money, as they put it, and he's got to be very careful what he, what he um, accuses them of because they'll just take him to task. Um, here's, here's an idea. Lower the tax rate, you morons. Yeah, but that's simple. Yeah, but they're still going to um, if it doesn't get lowered to what island, isn't it? Is that the lowest? That's where island. They no, no, push it. The through. lowest is zero, mate. And there's mm. plenty of places that pay zero. Well, they're not going to lower it to that. But I mean, no, but, they won't. But why shouldn't these these guys, if they're selling the stuff in Australia, well, yes, they should be paying the the GST. Yes, they are, but the they're tax. legitimately avoiding mm. it. They're not le- illegitimately yes, avoiding that, it. No, and it's, it's been proven. If you lower a tax rate, you will actually receive more revenue. Because mm. people stop worrying about avoidance schemes. They just go, look, 20%, here you go. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know. I think if it's, if it's still going to be above, if they've got a current scheme, in, a current uh, plan in place, they're not going to scrap that plan just because like, we, we reduce our tax rate, what, from 30 No, they, they will. They've got plenty of no, – it's not going to cost them anything to go, well, it's ch- – <clears throat> well, they go where the money is. Yeah, yeah. If it's less tax over here – We'll rejig our practices to put it over there. Mm. If suddenly Australia is less tax, we'll rejig our money to put it over there. You know, not maybe not all of it, but they'll give enough to keep shut up the tax office. Yeah, I, look, I, look, you're the one probably more uh, best to comment on these things. But from my my simple point of view, <laughs> my simple mind, um, I think yeah, it, what what they should be paying is if they have earned this six billion in Australia, then they p- uh, pay tax. Well, they didn't. Uh, on their revenue, four point nine billion. Then that's what they pay tax on. Well, so. <clears throat> then it's a definition of what's taxable income, and legitimately, oh, yes. their taxable income only allowed them to pay forty million dollars in tax, mm. and their taxable income would have been one hundred and twenty million or one hundred and fifty million. Yeah. So, well, I'm not privy yet to know what the their tax. That's their, simple. Their, yeah. They're legally so, doing. Yeah. Like either Kerry way, Pack it's, said, it's, like, it's Kerry like Pack seven, said, seven seconds income, so it doesn't really matter either way. Mm. Yeah. Well, look, like Kerry Packer <laughs> said. Anyone that doesn't try to lower their taxes has got rocks in their head. Well, yeah, well, true. Should be donating extra because what you what I'm giving you right now, you're not doing a real good job of it. Yes, that's right. <laughs> very true. Very true. Um, yes. All right. So, what else have we got? Have you got another one, Shane? Sitting quietly. Uh, yeah, there? I got one more. Uh, here we go. Hackers hijack website to avenge activist Aaron Swartz's death. So, Aaron Swartz was the. Um, Co-founder of Reddit, he was also the co-designer of the uh, what do they call it? RSS um, what's the thing for? standard, yeah, whatever. standard. Yeah, that'll do. it's not the word I was looking for, but that'll do. Yeah. Um, he, as we know, committed suicide because he was up for charges on uh, breaking or, or cracking into, into network something. Yeah, yeah, it was a university network, I think it was, and all he was doing was, um, I mean, when I say all he was doing, he was still breaking the law, but he was only stealing things like lectures and and papers and all that kind of stuff more yep. academic kind of stuff yeah anyway um the anonymous hacking group which is obviously the one that's everyone's kind of knows that it's in the industry that have broken into places like sony and other government websites they've um broken into the u.s sentencing commission and all kind of associated websites just to sort of say look you know we're not happy with how you went after aaron sports well, yeah, well they, they basically drove him to, to do what he did. Mm. But, yeah. but at the same time, uh, and as before with the copyright, this guy broke the law. He's he broke, did break the law. He's broke the law. He, was he did break the law, but the point is you don't, you don't use a sledgehammer to, open a wall, to, open, to bust a walnut. No. Right, and that's, that's, that's why I think he was driven, you know, in him mentally to just, you know, 35 years in prison and $1 million, hmm. that's using a sledgehammer to crack a peanut. Yeah. Well, and all he did was, like Shane said, just look at some academic papers, download a couple of lectures. Yeah. But like in all reality, we know that, that there's, there's 35 years in prison and $1 million. That, that's, that's the maximum. That would be the maximum fine. 
You it's know. a maximum. So he well, probably would have been given a good behaviour bond yeah. and to keep away from computers for yeah. two years or something but, like that. But you know, th- this this is here. Th- these the the severity of these or the the, the higher peak of these fines and these imprisonment terms is because you, you know if you get a terrorist that that slapped into the what do you do he broke into the closet of the the Massachusetts Institute of Technology and plugged in the computer network now if he was a terrorist and known he got caught and he was a known terrorist or whatever well yes throw the book at him no point in giving the terrorist um, you know pat on the back and say here you go have have, that's have, right. have 20 that's bucks right. on us yeah like, yeah, yeah, I suppose that's true. You've got to look at each case by case and not yeah. just broad brush everybody. So I don't know what he's doing. What did he hang himself or something? I don't know what he's doing there. I don't know what happened, actually. That's bloody crazy. But uh, anyway, so anyway, Anonymous is not happy about that yeah. either. Well, you know what I find? These Anonymous guys, you know, without um, um, you know, promoting what they do, how good are they? <laughs> yeah, they're pretty good. How good are they? Yeah, they yep. just go in. They go right. We're going to disable this. Bang, bang, bang. You're going to have a whole bunch of computers. I don't know where they, they, <clears throat> they just you know aggregate all these computers and just go bang. How good are they? Yeah, they're they're mm. bloody tops. Now I can't I can't believe that. They're, now I think was it wasn't it just today that there was some sort of thing going through the parliament that Nicola Roxon vetoed today about uh, insults and um, uh, so lots. You, they was they're trying to get some law through the parliament where you couldn't insult a person. Did, did you say that? It became, it, no, it was worse than that. It, there was two things, that, two main things that they were arguing against. This, this hideous law, it's a communist bloody law. If someone is offended by what you say, and look, in any argument, robust argument that you have. Someone's offended. Someone's going to get offended, right? I say something that you don't agree with and you might say something that I don't agree with. You know, yeah. you can still agree to disagree, but someone's going to be a little bit pissed off or offended. Yeah, that's right. So they're saying it's now illegal to offend somebody. Right? So now if I annoy you, yeah. you can take me to court. But is, that's not the worst part. It's the, the second part of that act was you are now guilty before, before being proven innocent. They've reversed the innocence, mm. um, innocent before proven guilty, which that is how communist China operates. That's how East Berlin operated. That's how communist Russia operated. Yeah, and that's what they were trying to put in, and that's what everyone was saying. This is ridiculous. Yeah, and so they pulled it. Thankfully, they pulled it. They so, haven't pulled all of it, so you've got to go read the fine print. But, They're not pulling all of it yet. But what I find um, interesting as well is is that when you know when Abbott's going to repeal, uh, well, how Abbott's going to repeal that anyway. Oh well, yeah, good. So um, let's hope he gets in now. It's free speech, <laughs> you know. Look, I will, and I have our argy bargy sometimes, and you know, I don't get a really lawsuit subpoena under my door. Yeah, yeah, I know. It, it, it is crazy. So, I mean, that's only because I sent him to the wrong address, but <laughs> no, I've got your address now, so it's fine. The next door's fine. <laughs> but uh, yeah, have your neighbours been put in prison lately? <laughs> <laughs> But when uh, Nicola Roxon was taken to task, apparently, I don't want to spend too much time on this because not she got uh, offended, so she sued them. <laughs> That's right. No, she was she was taken to task, and she go and she it's the same same thing, you know. Goes, oh, we just opened up the 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 discussion. We had no intention of implementing it. But oh, I mean, that's garbage. I know. Well, why you did you do it? Discussion at all? Why'd you do it? Waste all that money on discussing it if you had no intention of doing it? That's right. Like, no, that's. It's garbage. She's a liar. She's a communist red undie liar. <laughs> oh, look, there's lawsuits. There's lawsuits. Oh, yeah. <laughs> it's offended someone, have I? Now, uh, real... um, I was yes. going to say quickly, I've, I've, there's a, just on the copyright stuff, I found an interesting article about how they're, they're looking at changing it. But I just noticed a very interesting picture on the, uh, on the article, and I'll just quickly show it with you. Um, let's see if you can spot what actually is wrong with um, that picture. <laughs> uh, Other than the fact it's a copyright key, yes. why is it between H and K? That's a J. J. <laughs> yeah, well done. <laughs> the so Center these people creativity and regulation, enterprise and technology. Well, they, they didn't have. Don't know what they're doing about creative yeah, exactly. regulation and technology, do they? They didn't have um, a stock photo with the bottom <laughs> row of the keyboard. That's why. <laughs> How dumb but, is that? Uh, yeah. So. I don't, I don't believe anything these guys are going to say, but <laughs> theoretically what they're doing is... A um keyboard, was it? Sorry? Might be a Dvorak keyboard. No, nah, that's still wrong. I checked that too. <laughs> um, <laughs> the Centre for Creative, Creativity, Regulation, Enterprise and Technology uh, seek to address the challenges that are presented to businesses and government by increasingly... Di- by, by NA in the increasingly, increasingly digital world. Wow. 
while helping po policymakers develop new regulatory frameworks. So basically what they're doing, at the moment, the UK creative sector is responsible for $60 billion a year in fines for copyright infringements. Holy shabooly's. Um, so, which is about 6% of their GDP is <laughs> fines from copyright. That's ridiculous. So, that's crazy. So that's a new industry, yeah. lawsuits. Yeah. Basically. So, basically... Um, Got to love America. You know, studies have shown between 60 and 70% of young people download music, movies, TV shows, blah, blah, blah. But what they're basically doing is over the next four years... <laughs> Over the next four years, academics will work on 40 projects. So I'll tell you what they are. But basically, they're, what they're doing is they're going to go through and rejigger uh, the, the way the laws are written for copyright to help, as I was saying before, with somebody who wants to... I mean, in the old days, if you wanted to listen to a song, you'd walk into a music shop, throw the headphones on, and yep. decide if you want to listen to a CD. Yep. You, know, you can't really do that now. So what they're saying is, well, okay, well, hang on. You know, is, is that something that we can address? So... Um, so, so the good old UK, who makes sixty billion a year, have given them five million and said, "Here you go, do something with this." Um, <laughs> so yeah, they're basically trying to just ch change it all in relation. Part of it's the um, modern copyright problem that we're having. Oh, yeah. Part of it's just general copyright. Part of it's just oh. general fair use and and fair policy that we're having now. So they're, they're looking at the whole sort of spectrum of it. And uh, hopefully, they won't just become a, a a watchdog. They'll actually, you know, hmm. think about it a bit and do something because it'll be good. Yeah, look, I don't, I don't know what the answer is to all this copyright business, but um, whatever's going on is not working, is it? So they got to find something. Have a free for all. Uh, well, I, I as I've said before, if if I want to watch something and I don't want to go to the cinemas or I can't afford to go to the cinemas and spend fifteen dollars to watch it, or I just don't want to because I don't think it's going to be that good, you know. Give me an option to download it for a dollar because I can go to the video store and get it for a dollar. Yeah, that's right. But I'm not going to do that because it's too much work. So give me an option to download it for a dollar, mm. not fifteen dollars, which is what it's going to cost me to buy it. But even like you know, you you look at these movies on the T box, like some of those new releases are up what seven bucks. So that's, yeah, yeah six it? six nine and nine. Yeah. yeah, and that's probably not the HD version. So no. they're probably and if, no. if, it, if it's a series, for example, so they they're basically American, charging a DVD prices for rental. That's what they're doing. You know, yeah. say it's a DVD, uh, yeah, TV, American TV series. That's what between eleven and sixteen episodes a season, roughly. Um, Should be you know, fifteen it, bucks to buy. Well, the whole make it twenty cents an episode or ten bucks for the whole lot. You know, if it's a, or five bucks for the whole lot, whatever. The fact that they're going to get five dollars for an entire season is more than they're going to get for somebody who wouldn't have watched it if they had to fork Steve, out for pay well, TV well, or anything anyway. sites that put it up and you can watch it for free. So they're actually yeah. losing money by being greedy. Yeah, exactly. That's exactly the same concept as taxes. Yeah. If you lower the taxes, there's, there's, a, there's an optimum level of tax. If it's too low, people just don't pay it. If it's too high, they don't pay it. You get that optimum level and everyone will pay it gladly. And it's the same with what Will's saying about rentals, DVDs, copyrights, whatever you want to call it. You put it at a decent price and people will just pay it. I think No well, argument. And you'll make more money. Well, I know that these people, they've got shareholders that keep happy and all this sort of stuff. So they've got to, you know, they've got to do the best they can for their company. But why not just, let's say for a year, just give another option a go? But they'll make uh, more money. That's my point. The shareholders will be even happier. If they, yeah, but just give it a go, you know. Like it, might, it may or may not work. Try it. But well, we'll, look at Netflix in go. the States, right? Mm. You subscribe to them for $20 a month and you can watch anything you want. Yeah, yeah. Well, that's where it's got to come And that's to. working. They're worth a couple of billion dollars, Netflix now. Yeah, yeah. Look, that, yeah. Well, you really, um, you make it, you're not making, you know, you're not making a large profit on a single item. You're making a small profit on a lot of items. And that's, that's where, right, uh, and that's, that all adds up. You're making it on the volume. Yeah, that's right, and that's where they've got to start realising. I think that's, you know, listen to me, that's where they've got to start realising. Yeah, you tell them, Glenn. <laughs> yeah, what, what's going on? All right, now get off this copyright crap. Now, um, RIM changes name to BlackBerry. Sort of change it to <laughs> RIM, because that's what's going to happen to them. They're going to get rimmed. <laughs> Research in motion, for those that didn't know, and not, probably many of us did. And don't really care. <laughs> it's changing its name to BlackBerry to move to refresh its tarnished, imi tarnished image as that's it begins marketing. they fired all their researchers. So it's just in motion. Well, it's not even in motion, so they couldn't even use that. Yeah, just I still want to change their name. <laughs> yeah, Research No Motion. <laughs> so. Wrong. 
The, the All launched, research and nothing else. Their new line of BlackBerry 10 smartphones are, is due to launch, due to be uh, pumped out to England, I think, is the first country to get them. The BlackBerry 10 devices boast fast browsers, new features, smart cameras, and unlike previous BlackBerry models... Why don't they just put Windows 8 on it, Windows Phone 8 on it? Or Android, Sweet. or something. Um, oh, I said for business, yeah, you probably couldn't put Android on it, but you could probably put Windows 8. Well, put Windows on because they're beautiful-looking devices. They make good mm. hardware. But their yep. software is garbage. Oh look! Oh look! This Windows 8, the it's the new mold. It's good. I like it. I like yeah. it. The ants pants, you think? Oh no! I can see what they're doing. I can see as soon as I get a touchscreen tablet, uh, oh, this, oh, I'm going to be in heaven. Now BlackBerry oh. uh, <laughs> into the market. You're this going is, back to the dark side, dude. No, I've, I've never changed from PC. I've always liked PC. I've always been there. But I'm still saying that but I'm still I still like my Apple devices as my my personal little media carrier. Little toy things. That's right. Yeah. So but who knows in two years I might I might go. If everything if I've got a PC, I've got a tablet that interacts to the PC, I'm just the missing link is the phone. I might do a phone yeah, next time, nah. you know. That's, but that's this, gay dude. Samsung's you know? got <laughs> the same infrastructure. The Samsung you know, phone, T V, tablet computer, all their devices all interact with each other too. I've been you burned. Know. I just don't want my TV to have a virus, that's all. I've been burned by uh, by Samsung. I can't do it again. Not for a while. Not for a while. Once bitten. Ooh. Yeah, just because so- you had the only... Yeah, look, they, they... That was the problem with the earlier ones. They weren't known. And it's the same as one of the other Samsung phones, the Android phone I had. It was just a bad... That particular phone was just a bad phone. Unfortunately, it happens... You know, well, it, it does happen. So, I want to make a point about the BlackBerry name change before we move on, even though yeah. I think we already have. No, no. I've still um, got a few more things to go. So, everybody, it's safe to say that everybody knows RIM as BlackBerry anyway. That's yeah. true. And they've got their reputation based on that. So, they're now officially changing their name to something that everybody hates. Yeah, yeah, I know. The Blackberries associated. The thing is, they should have changed it to Blackberry when it was a very well liked brand. Now yeah. they're changing it because it is still well known by that, but it's known for a different reason now. People mm-hmm. are thinking, "Oh, Blackberry's clunky. It's crap. It's not keeping up. It's no, it's no innovation. The managers are arrogant. The start, mm-hmm. the software is garbage." So now they're putting it out. It's like calling the your new phone dog shit. <laughs> Reminds me of uh, now if you if you um, I don't know got access to YouTube it's probably on YouTube go and have a look and 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 watch a, it's a TV sketch by Ronnie Corbett uh, I think it was called the the one Ronnie <laughs> that was hilarious that was yeah. hilarious yeah the one of the one Ronnies yeah so the one Ronnie I think the show was called but there was a sketch in there about blackberry apples and uh, and yeah. and all that sort of stuff. it was it was quite funny so if you yeah. go on YouTube it now now these blackberries. Uh, uh, cameras, unlike previous models, you enter the market prime with a large application library. Yeah, good work. Including services, including services such as Skype. Whoa. <laughs> and, and, the, and, and Angry Birds. Oh, they've made it. They've made it. Oh, shut the gates. Geez. Yeah, shut the gates. Shut the gates. They're gone. Put your books They're down. Made, put yep. your pens down. You guys are going to be a success. Put down your glasses. Once you've got <laughs> Angry Birds on there, you've got nothing to worry yeah, about. You've got nothing to worry about. Wasn't Angry Birds three years ago? Yep. Uh, yeah. The BlackBerry... Z10 putting it on now. <laughs> touchscreen device in black or white. That's uh, in black or white, not in black and white. Uh, we'll be <laughs> imagine that it was in black and white. It's a black so and they're white doing touch. black and white, the colour. So they're not copying anyone, are they? No, no, they wouldn't dream of doing that. Mm-hmm. We'll be the first to hit the market with a country by country rollout that starts in Great Britain. A- According to their uh, marketing picture here, it comes with WikiReader. Oh, oh, really? Oh, you're serious? <laughs> that. But Help. you can't get that on any other platform. Put that back up. I oh, will. Hang on. Hang on. It's still up. Hang on. Let me have a look at that. Oh, hang on. Keeps flashing off. There we go. Look at that. Sweetness. Now, um, a... <laughs> you know what it looks like? It looks like a Ericsson phone I had just... about 10 years ago. It's like a PlayStation 2. <laughs> yeah, the yeah. little handheld. Yeah, that's a... Uh... PlayStation Portable. Oh, look that... Doesn't look like a bad looking phone, really. Oh, well, there's your, your microphones down the, near the BlackBerry logo. So your speakers and that grill up the top. So you've got the camera, speakers, looks like a power button, headphone jacks. And you've got two buttons right here in the middle on the side. That wouldn't be annoying. Mm. The AQ10 model, equipped with a small QWERTY keyboard that RIM made into its trademark, will launch globally in April. So no one will buy it. 
No one's buying it and you shouldn't be selling it. Now, um, what else have I got? Let's see what I've got because I've got one more. Has anyone else got anything else? Shane, what have you? What else have you got over there? Um, Do you have anything no, else? I'm pretty done. Oh, just a quick one. Apple TV update. Yeah, do yes. It. Just do uh, that. If you've yeah. got the last one, Glenn, which I think you do, you'll be able to control your Apple TV with your Bluetooth keyboard now. Oh, nice. Good. So the, Good. the latest one had a Bluetooth in there and they didn't tell anyone. And they've switched it on with the latest update and you can now control it with your keyboard. Right, not that I probably would want to do that, but um, yeah. It's an option. But I control mine with my iPhone. Yeah, so, that's right. It's easier. Yes. Now, look, Warlock, uh, or one of the one of the guys I, I play Minecraft with, he installed it on his, and he hasn't been able to get the boot up since. Well, that's just because he's an idiot. <laughs> now, <laughs> so what are you doing, Will? I saw you, you YouTube and a video the other night. What were you doing? Uh, Minecraft. Minecraft. Okay, now... Yeah, yeah move on. <laughs> 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 now, now, here's one. I've got one here. Um, this is just as a bit of interest. I don't know if it's uh, if anyone really cares. But Philips, uh, you know, Philips who make the DVD players and all that sort of stuff, they're going to exit oh, exit hi-fis and DVD players. Now, Dutch electronics giant Philips is set to sell off its home entertainment business including hi-fis and DVD players to Japan's Funai Electric. They'll pay 150 million euros, which is what, about 200 million US dollars. Yeah, uh, something like that. Phillips, also, take. Phillips reported a 355 million euro loss for the last three quarters. Holy sh... Yeah, the boss, the what? loss, the boss was upset, but the loss was... You in know why they make me losing money? Because they can't spell Phillips. I didn't even realise Philips was still oh, around, to be honest with you. I thought they just made razors now. I know. That's why I picked out the story because I thought they but still... They used to make beautiful computer screens. Mm. They used to make a lot of great stuff. I've got a Philips Hi-Fi from you know, the what? 80s and the thing's Hi-Fi. still pristine. <laughs> like, it's still amazing sound. Yeah, Philips are good. I like Philips. Now, the loss was in line with expectations as was oh. largely due to a 509 <laughs> million euro fine imposed on the company last year by a European commission for participating in a cartel to oh. fix the price... Uh, to fix Don't prices. you love that word, cartel? Yeah, to oh. fix prices in the television business. Oh, good old cartel. How'd that work out for you? Yeah, 509 million euros. Now, audio business will pass to Funai in the latter half of the year. The transfer is video business will not take place till 2017. The company wants to focus... Oh, guess what they're going into? They're getting out of the hi-fis. Android... No, they're cars, going. They're making cars. No, they are oh, the trusty old Phillips. They're going into healthcare. So oh, <laughs> they want to focus. Really? They want to focus on healthcare. Light bulbs. They're making money. Well, that make explains the story I was reading. Now the headline says tablets poised to see higher adoption in Indian schools. They must be making the tablets for the kids. So <laughs> light bulbs and home appliances, as part of its accelerate restructuring plan. Would you like to buy? A health insurance policy from Philips. Uh, oh. Would you? Yeah, why not? Well, I wouldn't. Couldn't be any worse than anyone else, could it? <laughs> now, um, look, I'm going to go through. Well, Sh- look, people Shane's walk all stories. the time, though. Nokia started out as a um, as a miner, man- uh, manufacturing paper. Nokia mm. in 1865. Yeah, okay. So, you know, people morph all the time. Now, here's, there's another, another one. Blackberry used to make phones, for example. <laughs> so, Nokia. Now, now, another one Shane pulled out through the week. Shane, this, uh, that top one there, about the US fighter jet. That was oh, interesting. Yeah. Well, let me scroll back up to that. US fighter jets got freaking lasers. Uh, defen- <laughs> uh, defense advanced oh, research. <laughs> defense advanced research projects agency DARPA. I've uh, recently announced that it is looking to test, fight, uh, test fighter jets equipped with laser turrets as early as 2014. Lockheed Martin won the $9.5 million contract from DARPA and is currently working on Phase 3 of the Aero Adaptive Aero Optic Beam mm. Control Project, which would allow tactile... Ta- ta- Tactical. Tactical. Tactical aircraft to fire mounted lasers through extreme turbulence at enemies coming from behind them. Oh, I love that. So it doesn't <laughs> get affected by turbulence or wind or anything. But how's this? Yeah, for, further on down here. That's it's, stuff. I love it. Further on it says um, there's a smaller, lighter, infinitely more terrifying iteration of the agency's earlier laser cal- ca- cannon outing the airborne laser test bed, which was so cumbersome it could not be mounted on anything smaller than a Boeing 747. <laughs> 
Yeah, well done. Yeah, so uh, Who did find this... that's the the NBN company. <laughs> yeah, that was their la- behind that one. Was that he? was their last project. Yeah, that was their miniaturized version. The last one had to go on a battle cruiser. Yeah, put on an aircraft carrier. <laughs> <laughs> Get me some freaking lasers. Now, did you have any more stories, Eric, or you're just about? Uh, uh, let me just see. With what you've got here, I think you've you got the. Oh, uh, look, there's only a small one. The iPhone five rumors are starting, so if anyone's interested, you can read the show notes. Yeah, the... little it's like different colours. Uh, you know, yellow, blue, red, obviously black and white, uh, purple, possibly uh, bigger screen. You know, so it's in there in the show notes. Have well, a look. Yeah, Apple's, they're going to have to funk it up. I know if uh, Steve like, Jobs was still there, he, uh, it would just be black and white. But I think, I don't know. Tom, they, it improved the software so that if it's that easy to operate, but anyone who can't operate, a hand comes out and punches you in the face <laughs> if you're that stupid that you can't operate it. All right. And now, look, uh, for more stories that we didn't get through to tonight, you can... Find them on the AussieTechHeads.com.au webpage. Just go to AussieTechHeads.com.au forward slash podcast and uh, navigate around the joint. Now, I've got here, just as to end, I've got a list of most trusted online companies. So the study of 100,000 adults, and that's a big study, let me tell you. That's a big study. 100,000 adults, and there's a PDF you can link to if you want to get right into the graphs and nuts and bolts of all these things, was conducted by research firm The Something uh, Institute and ranked 217 companies on their perceived trustworthiness. I don't know how to pronounce their name. Ponymon, something like that. So anyway, number one, the most trusted firm online. Guess who it is? American Express. It is. Have you, are you reading this? No, just a good guess, mate. Oh, yeah, sure. <laughs> now, that's the second year in a row. Now, Hewlett Packard, number two, second year in a row. Amazon. Hewlett Packard, really? Wow. Yeah. So I'll, I'll read. I'll, look, I'll just read. I'll, just, I'll quickly read some uh, in order from top to bottom. So <coughs> American Express, Hewlett Packard, Amazon, IBM, US Postal Service, Procter & Gamble, never heard of them. US AA, never heard of them. Nationwide. They made Colgate, Procter & Gamble. Procter & Gamble, you've never heard of them. No. How, where have you been? <laughs> I've never, ooh, I, why would I have heard of them? Because they make just about everything you'll use every day. Everything you use, you, they make. No, stuff. No, they make, no, Heads and we'll stuff. make 50% of what he uses, and the other 50% is made, made by Unilever. Yeah, that's it, exactly. Heads and shoulders, Colgate, or, oh, yeah. Never heard yeah. of them. Yeah, probably haven't well, unpacked the stuff, that's what yeah, the problem still is. still in the box, that's why. Still in the box, that's right. <laughs> uh, Intuit, I don't believe it. Intuit, number 10, you've got to be kidding me. Um, Verizon, Johnson & Johnson, FedEx, Weight Watchers, US Bank, Disney, Microsoft, Oh, Apple doesn't get a mention. Microsoft's in there. Um, United Healthcare, Visa, AT and T, Mozilla. There you go. There you go. So for those stories and more, AussieTechHouse.com.au forward slash podcast. Now, don't forget the hosting at uh, webpage forward slash hosting. And what what else we got going? I've still got to catch up with Garth. He's, he's he must have a thousand reviews to do by now. So I still got to catch up with him pretty soon. And what else? Uh, that's about it, isn't it? Thanks to uh, Tech Webcast. We rebroadcast their show on, I think they record Saturdays, techwebcast.info. And we rebroadcast that before the show, our show starts at uh, on Thursday nights. So normally around about 7.40, 7.30, 7.40, uh, if all goes well. If there's audio problems, 8 o'clock. <laughs> <laughs> but tonight, thank you. This episode has been really well brought to you by good audio from Skype tonight. It's been good. Hangout was pus, but the Skype has come through. Windows 8 yeah. Skype. Good on you. It has. Yeah, no, no ads. W- w- weren't Microsoft putting ads in this Skype? In this Skype business? I don't know. They we're supposed to. It. We're not, yeah, but we're not using it for video. Oh, it's only video, is it? Yeah. Oh, okay, right, yeah. Um, what else is it? I think that's, that's about it. Is there anything else we've got to talk about? I don't think so. I don't think so. Another weekend. The cricket, the West Indies, they're out tomorrow. Let's go. Yes. Let's yes, go. Yes, when are yes. you going? You're going, Eric? When are you going? Friday. Friday after. Tomorrow? Oh, no, no, after. the one after. February 8th. I wonder if they've had their um, prostate tests. <laughs> yeah. Oh, look, let's not start that. Because <laughs> that guy is such an idiot. Oh, look, I, I don't really – I don't probably get angry about that. I think he's made a joke. It was a joke. And it's not. It's the sort of joke that anyone would. Make, no, that's not the point, Glenn. The point is, if Tony Abbott said that, they would have crucified him. That's the yeah. point. Yeah. Oh, yes, yes, exactly. That's, that's oh, yes, yes, yes. Oh, yeah, totally. The joke's a joke, but if anyone else said that, they would have been granted a misogynist. This, that, now they're just yeah. dicks. So glass house sort of thing. Exactly. All right. So, um, all right. So Shane, what are you up to this week? Just working hard. Get all your servers and everything done. The majority of the cutover went well, but Good. there's some teething problems that have kept. A lot of people awake for a lot of hours during oh, the week good. Um, good. that still haven't been sorted. But 
The majority of it went well, so hopefully next week will be quieter. Oh, wonderful, wonderful. All right, well, Will, cleaning up. Oh, you didn't get wet. You're on a hill, so you're good. Yeah, we're all right, but I'll probably be at mates' places, I would say, helping them get sorted. And um, where, how's Frosty? I haven't heard of Frosty for a while. Is he in the chat tonight? Um, He's been quiet. No, he's not there quiet. tonight. He's probably working. He work, yeah. I think he works every night shift every second week. Oh, well, hello to uh, Frosty, if you're listening, and also the other regulars in the chat room, Milo. PA, PA and Milo. And uh, all those others that join us, snuggle up tight in the chat room every Thursday night. And everyone else that's out there, download us every single week because you need to know what's going on. And, uh, yes, <laughs> we'll give it to you. <laughs> Where were you going with that? I don't know. I was just going nowhere, I think. Uh, all right, I was just thinking about something else. But now we're good. All right, so uh, you can contact us, Glenn, Will, Eric, or Shane, at techheads.com.au. And that's it. So until next week, see you, Eric. See you, mate. See you, Shane. See ya, and sign up for the paper if you haven't. That's right, the paper. AussieTechers.com.au forward slash paper. Oh, that's all out there. And, uh, Aussie, <laughs> and follow Aussie Tech News in the Twitter. I might put it, I might change it so you get a few more, eh? You want a few more in the Twitter stream instead of two half an hour? I might change it like five, keep you busy. All right, I'll do that. And uh, see you later. See you next week, Will. See ya. All right, so until next week, everyone, it's uh, goodbye from all of us and uh, farewell. See ya. Bye.